I think this is working now. Guys, I'm so sorry for the technical difficulties. Human error is so acceptable, right? Like you guys forgive me, full of grace, but welcome to our call tonight. I really am excited because honestly, I feel like maybe somebody invited you here because we all deal with this, but we don't talk about it enough. Okay, so here's what I want to do. I want you guys to one, um, realize that you are a total human, and maybe the humor the, to the fact that I had technical difficulties <laughs> before I started is to remind you how okay it is to be tired, how okay it is to not know everything, how okay it is to feel busy, how okay it is to sometimes feel frazzled. But there are things that I feel like we do that sabotage us and that make us feel more tired than we're supposed to. I actually just got off of another team call about 20 so minutes ago, and I said, Raise your hand if you're busy. And everyone in the chat box is like, me, 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 me. And I just say, yeah, I think this world that we live in is so fast, so busy, that it's so common for us to just live in this spiral. And what happens is if, that we use all of us and we end up being really tired. We end up using all of our fuel to try to satisfy somebody else. We use all of our fuel to try to lift somebody else up. We use all of our fuel to try to raise our kids, clean our house, pay our bills, please our boss. We exude all of the energy that we have to help other people. And although that's like endearing, I do think that we sabotage ourselves by not having healthier habits in our life that's going to prevent us from feeling so nasty exhausted. So because there are actually 14 points that I want to go over tonight, um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. But without further ado, I am going to introduce myself because you guys might not even know me. You might not know what I'm about. You might not know who I am. You might just literally be finding me on YouTube or you might be invited to this webinar that we did live. So welcome guys. I'm going to explain to you 14 reasons why you are likely tired. One, because you're human, but that's not on the list. Let's just go ahead and say, like, it's not a big deal. We all know we all have a lot of things going on in our life, but how can you be as little tired as possible? Like, how can you just feel calm and energized and relaxed and really confident in the midst of having a lot of things going on? My name is Laura Mendenhall, and I am a retired um, corporate lady, like, Previously, I was white collar girl, boss lady working in corporate America, did that for several years, marketing director of a publicly traded company. Then I had my kiddos and I realized that I wanted to be a little bit more in control of my schedule, a little bit more in control of my income, a little bit more control of my career because I had seen a lot of people getting laid off. And I thought, ooh, I ain't got time for that. Mm -mm. I don't have time to be laid off because I got a family to raise. So I took matters to my own hand and I became an online health and fitness coach. So I've been doing that for three and a half years and it really has turned my family around in a really great way. So now this is my full-time job and I'm privileged to be able to research this stuff and then to talk about it. So this is just complete free information. This is a completely public free info to help you guys because I know what it feels like to be exhausted. I've been there. So I'm gonna share my screen with you guys because I am a visual learner and I wanna make sure that not only are you absorbing what we're talking about, but maybe um, hearing it and then seeing it, you could be like, yeah. This is not new info. You might hear the couple of first points I'm gonna talk about and be like, Okay, duh, why am I wasting my time listening live to this? Well, because it's important for you to understand the, uh, what, is the what is the word? To, to be reminded to um, the repetitiveness of the basics of what it means to be healthy or to be more energized. It's so important. There's 15 things. I think at the end you're going to be like, oh, duh, I didn't think about that. So let's go ahead and get started. 14 reasons why you're tired. Why you're tired, step number one. Okay, do you skip your workouts when you're tired? Duh, isn't it funny and ironic that people want to say, well, I'm too tired to do my workout, so I'm gonna skip it to get more rest. I will feel less tired if I take a rest day. I will feel less tired if I take time to, to sleep today or to sleep in, but what it actually does to your body is it stops the momentum. If you're like a moving car and you hit stop and then to push the gas pedal back on, it actually uses more gas, right? Did you guys know that? When you're talking about mechanics, when you're talking about cars, you actually use more fuel, more gasoline in your car when you start, stop, start, stop, start, stop, instead of just continuing to roll with it. So you are gonna be more tired if you skip your exercises because you are tired. Don't do that. Exercise, guys. Just a little bit each day is gonna go a long way. Maybe number two, 
You don't drink enough water. So a lot of you probably know the formula of how much water you are supposed to drink. You are supposed to drink at least half of your body weight in ounces every single day. And if you're not doing that, then you probably want are tired because then you're not fueling the 12 systems that your body has inside. You have 12 systems in your body that need H2O. Water is medicine. Water is so purifying to your body. It cleanses you out. It detoxes you. It refreshes your skin. It awakens you up. It helps your brain operate. It helps your skin and your nails grow. It helps you just overall feel awake and free. And when you're dehydrated, it is a long time to boost your body up again with those electrolytes and that water that you need. So if you're tired and feeling sluggish, maybe one of the first steps that you need to take is to actually start drinking more water. Number three, you're not consuming enough iron. Now I found irony in this picture. Irony, iron, well, ha, 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 no pun intended, I'm cracking myself up. Okay, I'm a big loser, but here we go. I find irony in this picture because I'm lifting weights, having iron, whatever. Not trying to be cheesy, but I didn't have like a picture of iron. <laughs> but consuming enough iron does not mean lifting weights. It does not mean iron actually like that. It actually means iron is so incredibly important. You can find that in so many proteins. You can find that in beans. You can find that in a lot of legumes. You might not be consuming enough iron, so you are becoming possibly anemic. And when you're anemic, your blood pressure might drop or you might feel sluggish. Personally, I was on the borderline of being anemic when I was pregnant and I started to have to take iron supplements because I, was on, I had such a low uh, blood pressure count, blood pressure that I was like, oh, okay, winded and just going, standing up and walking upstairs and I realized that I was not consuming enough iron. Now granted, it's because I was growing a human being, <laughs> so things change when that happens, but maybe consider the fact that you're not eating enough protein. That's so important. Okay, another one. Are you a perfectionist? Did you even consider the fact that you, that being a perfectionist could, could really cause you to be tired? Um, I'm actually going to share, I'm going to hide the sidebar because I don't want you guys to cheat. I don't want you guys to look ahead. So if you're a perfectionist, I'm just thinking like, how much energy do you spend? And I don't want to use this word, but I'm going to use it. I'm not scared. You might waste a lot of time trying to be perfect when you can't be. I mean, if you analyze, analyze, um, overanalyze, try to perfect. Um, I told somebody this weekend, I actually just got back off of a beach retreat with the team that I'm with, and we had a three, it's like a three and a half day weekend at the beach with these 12 other coaches on our team, just, just talking strategy, talking life, sharpening each other, really just connecting and getting so excited about what's to come. But I told one of these girls that she is losing energy and she's losing momentum because she is not willing to leave her driveway unless all of the lights are green. But you don't know what lights are going to be green when you leave your driveway. But if you wait to start until you know everything is planned out to a T, until everything is going to go perfect, until you have every single detail and you know every single answer and you have everything predictable in every scenario, and if you're one of those people that organize to organize to reorganize and then you reorganize, but you never actually take action. You never actually pick up, you know, a workout program. You not, never actually pick up that glass of water to drink. You never actually get closer to a deadline that you have because you're overanalyzing it and you're being a perfectionist. You're going to get exhausted mentally trying to be a perfectionist. So take a deep breath. Realize that you can just do the best that you can and you'll continue to be improving and it's okay. You don't have to be perfect. Done is better than perfect. Another thing that you might be doing to make yourself more tired than you should be is that you are making mountains out of mole heels. So I include my son here. My son's name is Leland. He's awesome. He's a four-year-old. He's a little nugget, just like any other little four-year-old boy, right? Like in the comment section, who has a little boy? Anybody understand toddler life? So he has a problem with making mountains out of molehills. He's kind of, he can be dramatic, so can his little brother who's one. He can be dramatic and he can have tantrums and he can feel so devastated that his granola bar was broken in half. So instead of accepting the fact that when you eat food, it breaks in half, he freaks out. <laughs> it's like if one thing goes wrong in our life, 
We are so devastated, so broken, so confused, and we don't know how to handle it. We just need to look at it sometimes and think life has silver lining and you can make lemonade out of limits. So you're exuding too much energy on things if you're letting little problems in your life become your entire focus of your life. If your entire focus are on your problems, then you're going to expand that. You're going to expand that. What you're not going to do, you're not going to be able to focus on good. If you focus on good things, that will expand. Let me put it somewhere else. This quote I love, what you focus on expands. If you focus on the problems that you have, the storms that you're going through, then you will then expand the good things. I mean, if you focus on the problems, you're going to expand the problems. If you focus on the good things, you're going to expand the good things. I totally butchered that. That was backwards. That got a little crazy. And I definitely feel like I beat a dead horse. But you got me? Don't be dramatic. <laughs> Another thing, you might be tired. You might be tired because you skip breakfast. So a lot of times I think... People say, I just don't have time for breakfast, or I just, I'm not a breakfast person, or I, I, I drink water, or I have an apple on the way to work, or I don't really eat until 11 um, because I'm just too busy, and by that time, I'm just snacking on goldfish with a kiddo, or I'm at work, and I just eat what's in the, you know, the lobby of our office, and it's usually donuts or danishes. You skip breakfast, but that's what starts your metabolism. If anything else, at least drink water when you first start. At least drink eight glasses of water within 30 minutes of you, of you waking up. So it starts your metabolism. So it wakes up your body, and it's like, hey, all of these systems, all of my organs, we are active. Today, the day has started, and I have big plans, and you guys got to stick with me. So don't skip breakfast because when your body wakes up, it's like reaching out for nutrients. It's reaching out for vitamins. It's reaching out with fuel to help it, it's basically reaching out for gasoline to help it even start the day, like to rev the engine. And if you skip it, it's gonna be living on fumes, and that's gonna take a lot of energy for it to use up what you don't give it. It's gonna to have to stretch and find things, and then you're gonna be storing fat in the wrong places, and then you're gonna be, it's taking your energy instead of taking your calories. That's what happens when you skip meals. I mean, you don't eat enough. It actually, in order for your body and your organs to survive and operate, it's going to be in survival mode. It's going to find something to fuel it, but it's taking the wrong things. Instead of taking fat to fuel, it's going to be taking your energy. And I don't know about you guys, but I would much rather my body be taking the f extra fat that I have to get its energy than to take my energy because I don't fuel it with any kind of nutrition. Or you could be on the exact opposite stream. Maybe it's not just that you're not fueling it with the right things. Maybe you're actually fueling it with like just junk food. Obviously, you guys know that that is going to make you tired. Like, that's not it. This is not groundbreaking. You guys know that if you live on junk food, you're going to be tired. But do you understand why? Do you understand how important nutrition is to your body, to your overall functioning? Like, I get it. Cheat meals are acceptable. I had a couple of this, I had a couple this weekend when I was uh, on my beach retreat and it was a lot of fun, but I know how to clean it up I know tomorrow, you know get back in my routine have my shake have my water have my like grilled chicken do my vegetables I kind of know how to get back into the groove I'm not gonna live and breathe on processed foods and candies and desserts and cokes because that's not fueling my body with the right nutrition and vitamins to let it get energy there is so much to accomplish in life or you might be extremely busy and everyone kind of agreed to that at the beginning that you are really busy but to be bit I mean guys we need energy to be awake we need energy to feel clear we need energy to feel like ourselves and to feel excited or feel passionate or feel like purposeful and if we're constantly weighted down and by being tired because of our own poor choices I feel like it's a mindset shift and nobody's judging you nobody's like I'm not mad at you if you have a bad habit of eating junk food. Girlfriend, I've been there. Like, I relate to you. I'm just telling you that I would love more than anything to help you get out of that mindset, to help you get out of those bad habits and say, I know how hard it is to be in the spiral of eating junk food and eating crap because it's convenient. But it's not fueling you to get more energy, to get done what you need to get done. Or maybe being more present with your family. Maybe being more present with your kids. Maybe being able to, you know, wake up a little earlier or stay up a little later to spend those little pockets of time with the people that you love. That kind of stuff, you can't get back. Time, you cannot get back. 
So the time that I have on this earth, I want to feel awake. Or do you have trouble saying no? Are you a yes man? Do you say yes to every single person and you're like, yes, I'll volunteer here. Yes, I'll donate here. Yes, I'll serve here. Yes, I'll show up here. Yes, that other person didn't, you know, take the weight, so I'll take this weight. And yes, 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 just because you're a people pleaser. That's really dangerous and you are going to be exuding your energy in the wrong places. Is there anything wrong with volunteering? No way. You're totally missing my point if you think there is. But what I am saying is if you have trouble saying no because you're just pleasing everybody else, then you're neglecting yourself. And of course, you're going to feel frazzled and not just physically, but mentally. Because if you never take the time to take care of yourself, mentally, you're not going to be strong enough to know what you want out of your life. You're not going to be clear enough to know what direction you're walking. You're not going to feel confident enough to tell your kids that, you know, you're, that they can do anything they want in life because all you're doing is just trying to keep up. All you're doing is literally just trying to stay afloat and not drown. And I don't want to live my life that way because I have felt that way before. And I don't want you to live your life that way where you just feel like all I'm ever trying to do is to prevent from drowning. I'm just treading water, treading water all day long. And I don't know how much longer I can do it. Oh, I just, I know, I know being tired is a real struggle, but sometimes you just have to realign your priorities and spend your time doing the most productive things based on what you want out of life, not pleasing everybody else, right? Capiche? Or if you're working, if you're a working mama, if you're um, full-time, part-time, whatever time, whatever, if you have a messy office, I work at my house, okay? And I do have a messy office. And I, I look at my office and my husband tells me this often. He's like, how do you work in this? And I say, I don't know. This is a bunch of crap. Like, I need to clean up my office and I wouldn't feel so foggy. Um, I don't feel foggy most of the time because sometimes I'm around my kids and I'll, you know, I'll turn off my phone completely and I'll run out there so it refuels me and I'll come back to my office to have a meeting or then I'll go swimming with them and I'll come back in here. So I have these pockets of time that refuels me so I'm not like living in my messy office. But I think, you know what, I would feel a lot more productive and a lot more um, clear if I wasn't so messy because I'm not going to know what's where, how's it going, it's sloppy, cleaning it up constantly, spending time looking for things that could otherwise be in their proper place. Having a messy office can just kind of like cloud your mind. Or do you work through vacations? Um, we all, you know, have our times where we check emails or we take a call or we talk with our bosses or employees or friends, and that's fine. I, I mean, everyone has responsibilities, and there's nothing wrong with you being a leader and you being responsible. But if you never have that time to unplug completely and detach to refuel you, um, I feel like that can be really dangerous because you are only one person, and it's very common for people to burn out or even implode if they don't take a break. Not all the time, not like 300 days out of 365 days, but I'm talking about set your pace, get a groove, know your limits, and if you need to take a vacation, then think ahead of time how you need to delegate your responsibilities. Who can you ask to step up in your place while you take this vacation? It's okay to be a human because you're not a robot, and if you delegate, or if you outsource, or if you relinquish control just during a couple of days on a vacation, that actually might empower your teammates to feel like, wow, she believes in me that much that she's allowing me to do this one little project for her, or wow, I'm excited because I know I could take over this one little thing. I'll let her know if I need her if there's an emergency. But sometimes you just have to be okay with not working through vacation, taking little pockets uh, where you can check emails or check in or connect but unplug every now and again, guys. All right? Like you live once. You live once. <laughs> or this. You have a glass of wine or two before bed. Now, studies have shown red wine helps your heart. It is not bad to consume alcohol. I agree. I totally understand. I enjoy a glass of wine from time to time. But it is true that wine can dehydrate you. Going back to the second point, being dehydrated takes away energy and makes you feel more tired. But also your body is going to be consuming so many calories right before bed that when you lay down at night, it's still burning them and it's still processing them. And then that 
sugar turns into fat and it's not fueling you because you're not exuding energy. And so not only is it going to cause some, you know, extra perhaps weight gain, because if you are drinking alcohol, if you are eating a lot of carbs or sugars right before bedtime, what your body wants to do is it wants to use those things and burn it off through exuding energy by staying awake a little longer, by taking a walk. And then it's not bad because you're using that thing that you just put in your body and you're turning it into energy. But if you put those things in your body and immediately go to bed, you don't, you're not burning energy. You're immediately going in hibernation mode. So your body goes into hibernation mode. So that just settles and converts into something that your body is not using. So it's just, it turns into fat. It turns into excess. It turns into grizzle. And so it's going to make you a little more dehydrated. It's going to make you a little more tired. It's going to make you feel a little more sluggish. And then your body is going to be working really hard trying to sleep, but burning off what you just put in your body. So that's just a little bit of my thoughts. So it's not bad to drink wine, but maybe, you know, a little earlier, earlier in the night. Don't go to bed right after you drink or right after you have a big meal. Try to stay awake a little bit longer at least to help your body burn that off in the right way. Um, a bad habit that I am guilty of, and perhaps some of you, is that you check your email at bedtime. So that not only am I talking about how your body and what happens in your stomach can keep you from getting a good night, a good night rest, actually your mind, if you don't work on shutting your mind down, then your mind is going to be constantly going. And you're not going to be able to put your mind at rest to have a proper night's sleep. I know from experience when I have late nights at work and I'm in the zone and I'm going, 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 and I'm like, okay, I've reached my limit. It's 2 a.m. I'm going to bed. Um, I go to bed, I close my eyes, and my brain is so active that literally my eyelashes are still fluttering. And I'm like, whoa, I feel like a freak. <laughs> it's like the weirdest thing. I honestly, I, I feel my brain going, I feel my eyes like twitching and going, and I'm thinking, what's happening? Like, I want to go to sleep. And it's because I did not shut down. I feel, I feel like everyone might be different, but personally, if you have like an hour before bed to unplug, not get away from screens, not check emails, not have your brain projecting on what's to come the next day, but just be restful, then you might realize going to bed will be easier. So you're not going to be staying up thinking and worrying about what's going on the next day. You've already had processed that. So last but not least, you might be relying on caffeine to get you through the day. And I found this picture to be ironic because this truly is, to me, what could get you through the day is proper nutrition, uh, which to me, that cup personally is a shake that I drink every day that helps me with my nutrition, but or, you know, exercising. So caffeine, is it bad? No, okay? Caffeine is actually, there's a, did you know there's a coffee fruit? Like it's not just a bean. Coffee comes from a fruit. And then beans are from there, and that's how it's processed, and that's how it's ground, and that's where we come up with this brilliant thing of caffeination. Is that a word? Caffeination? Caffeinated? Did I make that up? I'm just going to roll with it. I'm going to roll. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. I'm going to roll with it. You rely on caffeine throughout the day to get you through the day. So you're not even allowing your body to do its job. You don't even know what like your neutral state is. You don't even know if you need energy or not because you're just boosting it constantly with caffeine. So your natural state might be like, you can't see my hands right now, um, but your natural state might be at a level seven. But because you're putting caffeine in your body all day long, you are putting it at a level nine, but it's not natural. You're like, in the morning, if you need to wake up, bring it to a nine, it'll go back to your level seven state. But if all day long, you're just trying to fuel it with things and your body's not able to balance out itself, it's not able to realize because she's feeling tired, I need more water. Your body is not going to be able to communicate with you what it needs to get more energy because you're kind of covering the problem. If you're relying on caffeine throughout the day, you're kind of covering up what your body might be trying to communicate to you in order for you to get more energy. You might not realize that you're tired because getting four hours of sleep at night is not cutting it, but you might not realize it because you don't feel tired throughout the day because you're drinking caffeine. But what your body might be telling you is, girlfriend, you need eight hours of sleep. Get it together. Or you might, your body might think, I'm sluggish and I'm tired and your muscles are sore and your muscles are weak and you need to build and you need to work out and you need to go do cardio. But because you're pumping your body with caffeine all day long, it's not able to communicate that because you're thinking, I feel fine. I feel energetic. It's a crutch. Oh, I'm tired again. Let me go ahead and drink some more caffeine. But what if you limited that and you had caffeine in the morning or caffeine in the afternoon, whatever, 
But in the other parts of the day, you start working on your mental health. You start working on your physical health. You start working on your spiritual health. And I bet naturally you will understand that you could develop more energy by working in those areas in your life instead of constantly trying to just create fake energy. Again, I don't see anything wrong with caffeine. I'm not, I mean, I drink caffeine. There's nothing wrong with it. But to get in the habit of always needing it, you can, you can become over be obsessed with it where you can become addicted and you can't properly function without it and anything that I feel like you can't properly function without you might need to figure out okay is this completely healthy for my body is it all natural is it benefiting me can I have too much of it and am I using it properly just assess all of those things and I feel like overall you'll be healthier so those are 14 reasons 14 reasons why you're likely tired now am I sitting here giving you all those things and then you're not going to feel any kind of solution. No, I'm not going to leave you out to dry because I equally share in the struggle bus of, yeah, girl, I've been tired before. Like, I know real life, it's, you get tired, you get sluggish. Sometimes you can't control it. Sometimes life is just happening to you and you just have to, like, step up. You just have to pull your big girl panties on and step up and say, I got to handle this. I got responsibilities. I have to raise my kids. I have to do my job. I have to handle the storm in my life. And if that's the case, then in order for you to still move forward in your life, how about these 14 things that we talked about? How about you fix a little bit of them? How about you improve a little bit in those areas so when you are going through a storm or you are going through a busy season of your life where you're naturally just going to be tired because life, then at least you know the things that you can control are not sabotaging you. Like your workouts, like what you're eating, like your sleep habits, like your water intake, like your ability to say no to people because you're protecting your time because you don't want to overdo it. Because you're in order to maintain your priorities, family, work, life, spiritual life, like whatever your priorities are, you're not saying yes to everyone else and then forgetting that. So you want to feel that balance because it's not just about physical tiredness. I know that you can be mentally tired, emotionally tired, physically tired, and those are all real things. And those are all real things that will prevent you from being your best. So I've, you know, I've created an entire platform online about trying to help women feel their best and trying to help women feel confident. Um, so because of that, I have started I lead these online fitness groups every single month. So does everyone on my team. And I just think, good grief, but people just plugged in to our support system where he said, hey, um, if you want to work out, I, I can help you with the program. If you want to learn how to eat healthier, I can simplify that for you. If you want support system with some friends who have the same physical goals, um, I can connect you with them. And you guys can talk about it. And you guys can hold each other accountable. So every single month, that's what I do to try to keep myself accountable, and that's what I do to try to keep my energy high. Um, that's what I do to try to keep my mental health there, is I, I plug in to a group of positive people that will sharpen me, that will say, Laura, I think you are capable of a lot of good things, and I want to do life with you, so let's work out, let's eat right, and let's keep each other accountable. So every single month, we have these groups going on, and it's been, it's been really helpful for me personally to learn how to um, optimize my energy. Even as a mom of two toddler boys, even as a business owner, um, even as somebody who you know just bought a house, just went through that process, I've moved eight times in six years. Um, like We've had our own set of storms that we've had to overcome that used a lot of my energy. I found a gray hair today. This morning, I woke up and I found a gray hair and I was like, oh heck no, I pulled it out. Was that a bad choice? Like, is it true? The wife would be like, if you pull gray hair out, are you gonna get more? I don't know, I, I don't know, should I be concerned? I don't know. But all I know is that I want to live my life awake. I want to live my life with no regrets. I want to live my life just knowing that I'm present with my boys, with my family, with my, um, you know, my teammates and being tired if I can control a portion of that, then I, it's my responsibility. So those 14 things that I shared with you guys, that's it. Like, think about that. What is one thing that stuck out, stuck, that stood out to you, that stuck out to you in those list of 14 things? Are there like a handful of things that you're thinking, yeah, I don't do that. Yeah, that's why I'm tired and I'm going to fix that tomorrow. You're, it's all it takes is one choice. All it takes is one choice for you to make a change and be better tomorrow. Okay. So how about this? 
before I end, if you are watching this, uh, you might want those slides. You might want more information from us. So feel free to drop your email um, in the comment section and we can connect. If you have a coach who invited you to this webinar, reach out to them, not me, because you guys are friends and buddies and they can help you. Um, because I think that as an entire team and as an entire um, group of women who, you know, desire to one, be healthier and happier ourselves, we want to help anyone else who needs that same vibe. Um, so anyways, if you are working with somebody who invited you here, connect with them, um, ask them to send you this information, or if you want me to send you a quick email, let me know too. That's how it goes, okay? So that's how simple it is. I um, would love to connect, would love to help you if you're feeling totally run down and dry and exhausted. I've been there, and these are a couple of my tips. So thank you guys so much for listening on. I hope that this was helpful, and I can't wait to connect soon, hopefully. Bye. Bye.